And I honestly did not realize how dependent I am on my needles and just knowing I have all my needles and can cast on whatever I want until I didn't have them. Hi, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Lina and I'm a knitter from Norway and welcome to my knitting podcast. Here I talk about all things knitting, honestly. I talk about my current projects, my finished projects, my yarn, my uh, plans with that yarn, just anything knitting. But before we get into that, I'll talk a bit about what I'm wearing and today I'm wearing my April cardigan. I just had to wear that today because as you might know if you watched my last one, I did um, forget this uh, or misplace it when I visited my friends. Uh, I left it there and I got it back just recently and I'm so pleased to have it back. This is just the perfect basic. It is very very basic. Just a uh, black quite tight fitting cardigan and I love it so much um, so I'm really pleased to have it back. I have been grabbing towards this and just gravitating towards this since I got it back and before I lost it too. It's just so great and I think maybe the thing I love the most about this also compared to all the other things in my wardrobe is that this has no mohair and it's so soft. I knit this in two strands of Drops Baby Merino in the color black of course and I think double stranding Drops Baby Merino is some of the softest fabric there is. I have also used Drops Merino Extra Fine which is really close to uh, the thickness and gauge you get with Drops Baby Merino double stranded, but there is something about double stranding Drops Baby Merino that it's just that much softer. I don't know what it is, but double stranding is dro Drops Baby Merino is just the softest fabric there is. So I'm just really pleased to have a tight fitting cardigan, just quick to throw on. It goes with everything since it's black and also no mohair, so it doesn't itch at all. It's just comfortable. I love to wear this around the house and just everywhere I go. So I'm so pleased to have it back. Also, of course, this is a quite recently finished project. I finished this in December, so it still has that new finished project vibe to it, which also makes me love it maybe a bit more, but I, can hands down say that this is already a staple in my wardrobe and I'm so happy that I finally made my black cardigan but uh, as you might see it has no buttons so I've been trying to figure out if I want to have buttons which I think I do just to be able to close it sometimes and then I've been trying to figure out what kind of buttons and I would love if I was able to not buy any because buttons are quite expensive. So I have found these. I think I originally bought these for my Agnit cardigan but that's had, that one has not gotten buttons and I don't think it ever will because I quite enjoy it without. So I'm thinking it might fit this. Uh, they fit the buttonholes. I don't think they are too big or too small. So maybe this. Um, they are like white, kind of translucent. I don't know. It's a bit hard <laughs> to show, but that's what they look like. Um, I don't know. Please let me know if you think that fits. Or if I should go with black buttons just for it to be all black. I don't know. I'm very in between having like a white kind of very clear difference between the button and the cardigan. Or just having it all black. But I think it's either white or black. But I just really don't know. So please let me know what you think. If those are okay I'll probably just use those so I don't have to go and buy buttons. But 
I think that's everything for the um, April cardigan. I'm just really happy to have it back. Um, another thing I forgot at my friends when we visited was my needles. And I honestly did not realize how dependent I am on my needles and just knowing I have all my needles and can cast on whatever I want until I didn't have them. It, my knitting mojo took such a hit, even though I knew with myself that I told myself that I wasn't going to cast on anything else because I had so many projects already. Just the fact that I couldn't, like physically couldn't cast on projects because I didn't have needles really affected my knitting mojo, even though I most likely wouldn't have, but just because I couldn't, I really wanted to. But I have gotten them back and I have gotten a few comments about people wanting to see how I keep my needles, so I thought I'd just show you now that I've gotten them back and I keep them in this, um, I don't know what you would call it, but it snaps like this so the needles doesn't fall out. Um, and then I have my needles in here. My mother made me this for my, I think, 18 year birthday. Um, it's originally just for my DPNs. So I have my all my DPNs from 2.5 uh, millimeter to 5 millimeter here. So 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5. And I think I also have 6 millimeter DPNs, but once we get above five millimeter uh, needle size. I don't really have a system for my needles. These are uh, the needles I use the most. And these are like the sizes of needle I use the most. So these are organized. The rest of my needles is just pure chaos. Um, but since I don't really have anywhere to store my circular needles, I've also just took those in here so it doesn't really look like a system but I promise there is so for example with the two and a half millimeter I have a two and a half millimeter circular just tucked in that same <laughs> opening and uh, just so I don't have to check what uh, size the needle is all the time and with the five millimeter I actually have a five and a half <laughs> just because I don't have a five millimeter but I use the five and a half so I keep that with the five. Um, and then I'll try to show, but I have the most three millimeter needles. All of these are three millimeter needles and I think there's five and three of them are 40 centimeter um, needles, but I do use a lot of three millimeter needles. I think I racked up most of these when I was in my baby knitting marathon with my son, I knit a lot for him and most of it on 3mm needles. So I really got use out of all of these. Um, and then I have one that's an 80cm in case I'm doing something with a bit more stitches or an adult sized something. Um, but that's kind of the way it goes on all of them. With the 4mm needles, I have these 4mm circulars with them. So that's how I keep my knitting needles. It's a bit of chaos, but at least I'm sure when I just grab a needle really quickly that it's the right size and it's just all together, which is really nice when I want to bring something somewhere, but really bad when I forget to bring it back with me. And also, since this is made with fabric, I have just stuffed my needle I use for Italian bind off and weaving in ends in there as well. Um, this one, so I just stick that down in the fabric here. So, really, all of my essentials are in the same place. So, when I lost this, I did not know what to do. So, I'm really happy I got them back really quickly. But uh, with all that said, I think we can finally move into whips and I'll start with my oldest whips. Th this week I'm actually finally down to two whips um, and this one is my oldest. 
this is the Violetta Pullover. I started this some time ago, I don't know, maybe two weeks, two and a half weeks. Um, but this has just been laying around um, on stitch holders just because after I did the um, neckline and uh, the collar, the next step in the pattern was to place all the stitch markers, I think 16. And also I didn't have my needles at that point and I just was not super motivated. So I just said, this will have to take a break. Um, I talked a bit about that last podcast and I got a lot of great suggestions on stitch markers and stitch markers you like, what kind of stitch markers to get that's not too expensive. But also a lot of you said to just use a string, but to tie it um, in a knot so it doesn't slip out. So I did do that. I have already removed quite a few of them. Now I have five left, one to mark the beginning of round in a different color, and then four left just to show me uh, a bit in the pattern. I think I'm going to remove those soon too. Um, but as I said, I think there were 16 in the beginning, but I just could not handle it. They were great in the beginning when the pattern was um, being established, but when I had knit a few rounds and I could start to see the raglan, for example, uh, because with the raglan you had two stitch markers, but I think at this point it's quite clear where the raglan is, so I just did not feel the need to have more stitch markers there. I just feel like they made it almost a bit harder <laughs> to see what I was supposed to do because since I used yarn, the yarn curled up and got in the way of stitches and I almost knit the stitch um, markers sometimes. So when I could very clearly see where the raglan was and some other parts of the pattern, I just decided to remove them. But I kept, as I said, I kept four just because I didn't think that part of the pattern was that clear yet but I'm getting to a point now where I feel like that part of the pattern is also quite clear so I think I'll remove those soon too because I just feel I get a bit way better groove and like I get into my knitting a lot more when I don't have to slip these stitch markers all the time and I can just knit and look at my knitting and see what I'm supposed to do guess slipping stitch markers especially when it's yarn so it doesn't have a lot of structure just really gets me out of the groove and then I like have to um, get back into it and then if there's only a few stitches until the next stitch markers uh, I can never really get into it so the more stitch markers I've removed the better it has gotten and I picked this up um, last night I wanted to pick it up again before this podcast because I had gotten down to just uh, two active projects yesterday so I thought that was the perfect time to pick it up and I wanted to see if I could get far enough to show you the structure today and I did um, and it was almost dangerous to pick this up because I picked it up uh, pretty late last night so I knew I couldn't do too too much before going to bed and it was so hard to put down because there is happening something all the time you have cables here lace here cables in the middle again lace cable uh, increases and then cables on the sleeves again so there's always something happening I was super engaged with this pattern and at that point I didn't really see the pattern. Now you can start to see the pattern, but I didn't then, so I was so excited to knit far enough to be able to start to see the pattern. So it was so hard to put down and go to bed. And when I woke up today, I was so excited to pick it back up and continue working. I did not want to stop working on it to record this podcast. I have um, put the podcast off for quite some hours today just because I wanted to sit and knit on this. I will say though that since it is 
so engaging and there's always something happening it's maybe not the best um project to get on while my son is awake but also now that i've gotten so far and i can very clearly see where i am in the pattern i think it's maybe a pattern i can it while he's awake but i definitely could not while i was establishing the pattern so i'm really happy i got to that yesterday and um I'm just in love with some of these cables and the cable on the sleeve as well. I think some of these lace and cables are giving me some ideas for my wedding dress as well. So it's really fun to just play around with lots of structure now since I am trying to think about what sort of structure and lace I want for my wedding dress. So I really want to try out a few different things in different garments just to see how I like them and to learn the techniques in case I want them for my wedding dress um, but yeah I have done I think I've done maybe a third of the increases now or something so since this is so engaging and I just want to knit on this all the time I think I will have separated for sleeves at least by the next podcast um, and then I'm just excited to see how much further I've gotten but I'm really excited to have this pink sweater full of cables and lace and everything I think this will be a great sp uh, a great sweater also I think it will be great for spring since it is such a light pink I'm trying to manifest some spring vibes even though I know we'll have winter for quite some months still but as it's getting lighter, I just want to manifest all of those spring wipes. So that's my first whip. And then my second whip is the sweater I adopted from my friend. The Sunday sweater mohair edition by Petite Net. That was the Violetta Pullover by Eve Net. Um, but this I don't think I've gotten a lot of progress since the last podcast I have been focusing on other projects I did want to get to the point where I separated four sleeves on this one but I just could not get there um, I did really struggle with my motivation to knit just at all this week because of my missing needles um, and this project is not the easiest to uh, work on while you're doing other stuff because of the mohair. The mohair has to be very still and if it isn't it will tangle really easily. So this is a project I only knit on if I'm sitting like super still in the sofa. So didn't get to work a lot on it. I think I still have a few centimeters to go until the last increase. So maybe eight more centimeters in all before separating for the sleeves. I really hope I'll have gotten that done by next week. Um, my friend that I adopted this for is probably coming to visit us in about two weeks. I think almost is exactly two weeks. So I really want to be able to <laughs> gift this back by then. Um, and I think that this yoke is going to be the most time consuming because this is the part with structure and also the most stitches. I think it will move much quicker when it's just stuck in it on the body and the sleeves. But I do want to have gotten quite far by next week because next week there will only be one week left uh, and I'm also very excited for some of the other projects I want to do in February so I am at two weeks now which I said I is kind of where I want to be at but I feel like the two whips I have are two grown adult women's sweaters so I might cast on something else just for a palette cleanser um, this one is knit in Drops Kid Silk in the color black. Um, I did talk a bit about that last podcast that the black in the Kid Silk is not as black as 
and the black of the um, the Ebbe Merino, for example, the silk thread in the middle is uh, very white, which has been great for this project because I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's knit in that. There's not really a lot more to say because I haven't been knitting a lot. I think I forgot to mention what my Violetta is knit in. It's knit in Drops Flora and Drops Kid Silk. This one is just called Pink and this is called Pearl Pink. But those are my two active projects and then we can move into my finished projects and this week I actually have two. Um, the first one is uh, I didn't actually like finish this this week but I did the last finish. Um, the only thing missing on this one was to do the Ita Italian bind off but because all of my needles, both uh, my needles were doing Italian um, cast off and my knitting needles were gone. I didn't get to do that last week, but now it's done. Um, I love doing Italian cast off. It was great to have uh, this project to just do Italian by the phone in between everything else. So now that's done. This is also a gift for that friend that's probably coming in two weeks. So I'm really happy to have it done. Of course, I need to weave in ends, but. Even though I wanted to get better at that this year, I have not gotten better at it. I still have projects from last September that I have not weaved in the ends for. Um, I just can't get myself to do it. It's honestly a problem, but maybe I'll take a weekend to just weave in all the ends before they get here. Um, please send tips on how you get yourself to weave in ends because it's such a struggle for me. But that's this finished project. This is the Chunky Rib Pants by Yord Clothing. I knit this in Drops Baby Merino. Again, double stranded, so soft and comfortable. And since this is in double ribbing, they will grow with the child a lot. These are the one to two year uh, size. I have an elastic in the waist but they will grow a lot this way and also you have a little um, folded up hem with single ribbing down here that you can extend when the child grows in length. So I really enjoy these pants just for um, how well thought out they are since kids grow so much. I really like when patterns have kept that in mind and figured out a way for the um, finished knit to fit as long as possible because when knitting for kids, um, if you don't find patterns like this, you have to knit something new every other <laughs> week. Um, so I really recommend this pattern. I think unfortunately that it's not translated into English yet but it's a great pattern if you know Norwegian or if you want to try Google Translate or something. I really enjoy this. I've made it for my son when he was uh, a baby. My son has a pair of these now. I love to gift them. They just have a really great fit. Um, but the f project this week that I like actually worked on and finished knitting this week was my Eva cardigan, which means that I'm finally done with Christmas gifts. Um, and that has been so great to finally be able to put Christmas behind me and kind of, I don't feel like I've been stressing with this since this finished right before February. I think maybe the last day of January I finished this. Um, but it's really nice to be able to put that all behind me and put December behind me now finally in February. So this is the Eva cardigan for my sister. It's not blocked or anything yet. No ends weaved in, no buttons, but it's finished to me and then everything else will be a problem for me later. Um, but I think I can just try it on to show it. When I was knitting the button band, I was so scared because it looks quite loose. 
at the cost of edge so I was really scared that, that was going to flare a lot um, but when I tried it on uh, of course you have to like pull on it a bit when I tried it on I don't think the cast on edge flares at all this fits a bit weirdly now because it has not been washed so it's just a bit stiff and the ribbing acts a bit weird uh, but I'm so happy with how Drops Lima fit. I knit this in Drops Lima in the color Arm Almond and I'm so happy with how Drops Lima fit this pattern. I've made from for myself before but then I used the yarn originally used in the pattern. I used Per Gunten, Um but I love how Lima worked up with this as well. I love how it is in a lighter color so you can see more of the details. I love the long ribbing. I love the double rib button at the band as well. I made this a bit longer than the one I made myself because my sister is longer than me. I also tried to make the sleeves a bit longer. They'll probably get even longer in, when I block. So hopefully this is going to fit her perfectly. Even though I made this longer everywhere, it actually ended up being... I think almost a hundred gram lighter than the one I made because Drops Lima is a hundred meters per 50 grams and I think Per Gint only is 91 or something. So it was really fun to see how big of a difference that's actually made in such a large garment that this is. And But that means I ended up with quite a lot of scraps from this but luckily this is my favorite color i think of drop slima at least it's very high up there so i'll definitely be able to find something else to do with it um but i think i'm just going to take a bit of a break from this color now and just be happy that my christmas gifts are finally done i can finally focus on some of the other projects finally move on with the Violetta. I'm just really pleased to finally have gotten some um, somewhere with all of my knitting time. I feel like in January I knit a lot without ever really finishing anything until like the very last while of January and then I, the ball really started rolling and I finished a lot and just got things off my needles and it was so great. I think in January I actually ended up knitting close to two kilos of yarn. Keep in mind a lot of those projects came with me into 2024 so I've, I had already knit a bit of yarn up in 2023 but all of it counts in January because that's when I finished it. So I'm quite pleased with how much I managed to knit in January. I am as you might know, on a mission to shrink my yarn stash. And I did buy all the yarn for my wedding dress in January, which ended up being close to two kilos, but I think I actually managed to shrink my yarn stash just because I was able to knit just a tiny bit more than I bought. So if I keep that going, I think I will be able to decrease my yarn stash quite a bit because I'm not going to be buying a wedding dress amount of yarn every month. Uh, but that's my finished project and then I thought I would just show you my like February basket of yarn and things I want to make or start on in February. I have gotten this basket. I think I got it at the beginning of January just to keep my knits in and all the yarn I'm working with and want to work with. So at the top here I think you um, can recognize a lot of the yarn. I have the yarn for my Violetta and the yarn for my uh, Sunday sweater mohair edition. And then I have the scrap yarn from my brother's socks that I made for his Christmas gift. Remagarn 
Vandre and that I'm going to use uh, to make socks for my son. I want to get that out of stash as soon as possible, make socks while it's still winter and cold. Um, I also have another project for my son in here. I want to finally make him the pants I've been talking about for half a year, <laughs> make him his Willems slickovers in Drops Merino Extra Fine. So I have that in here and then <laughs> towards the bottom if I really go diving in here I have the scraps from, from my porcelain sweater that I'm really excited to cast on. I think this might um, be something I cast on really soon because I just cannot stop thinking about casting it on. And while I was knitting my porcelain sweater, I did realize that I was going to have quite a lot of scraps with Flora, both in denim blue and white. So I started thinking, what can I do with all of these scraps? The porcelain sweater, um, I thought that would use up most of it. So the wheels started spinning. I started thinking about that the first, first thing I made with these two colors together were my son's melange sweater and I really like how these colors turned out together in that melange sweater so I started thinking about okay um, do I think I'll have enough yarn when the porcelain is finished to make the melange sweater in the adult size I went to Petit Knit's website to check how much yarn you needed in each color I figured out that I would probably have enough and then I started thinking about us matching I made his melange sweater in size three to four years so we still have like two years of matching if I made it for myself and once I started thinking like that I knew there were was no way back because I'm really 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 weak for family matches or mother-son matches, especially with knitting, that's basically where we match. We don't really have matching clothes, but we have a lot of matching knitwear and it is some of the cutest thing I know to wear together, all as a family or me and my son to match. I love it. I love to dress him and match. Um, and I think the, fact, uh, the thing I love the most about it is knitting it up and just knowing we're going to match. So the scraps from my porcelain sweater is going to turn into a melange sweater for me. I'm really excited. I really like the fit of the melange sweater. It is really basic, but I don't think you can really go wrong <laughs> with basic sweaters. And it's going to be... Uh, match with my son. I just don't think you can really go wrong with that. I also love these colors. I love love them in my son's balloon sweater. I love them in my porcelain sweater. So I'm really excited and I've really been struggling to not just cast this on. I have had so many days where I've been like this far from just casting it on but I've been able to keep myself from it for now so I don't know how much longer I can do that I think I'll hold off until I have separated for sleeves on either one of my already um, adult sized sweaters that I'm making but I don't know if I can hold off for much longer so there is a very real possibility that I'll have three whips and all of them will be adult sized sweaters but I do love knitting sweaters, so I think that'll be fine. Uh, and then at the very bottom of my basket, I have the yarn for my fiancé's uh, double tuffler. I did try to knit mine this, uh, this month and they felt it horribly. So I have not made his yet, but I am hoping to get yarn for slippers for myself and then knit his. Um, but that's at the very bottom of the basket and like the last in the line of priority. So um, I have a lot of projects to get through before I get to that. But that's like my basket of um, things I want to knit in February. And I've tried to put the yarn for the Milan sweater towards the bottom to try to like keep me from casting on. 
we'll see how well that works. Um, but I think that's everything I had for this podcast. I'm finally down to two active whips. I don't think it's very likely that I'll be able to keep myself there. Um, but at least we've touched uh, two whips and we'll see if we can get back there sometime later. I've finally done with Christmas gifts. That's such a relief. And now I'm just excited to knit whatever I want to knit instead of feeling like I have to knit gifts for others. But as I said, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like in the comment. And if you want to see more from me, please subscribe. Bye.